Well, the widespread adoption of digitization presents banks and financial services firms with a wealth of opportunities. At the same time, traditional operators face stiff competition from young players with new tech stacks while being weighed down by legacy systems in a world where agility means everything. That's right. And joining us now to talk a little bit more about that is Connor Collieri. He's a vice, senior vice president at Oracle Financial Services. He's here to talk about where the solutions lie in the new data-driven digital economy. Hi, Connor. Thanks for taking the time. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you very much. So first of all, just tell us a little bit about Oracle Financial Services. So look, I mean, Oracle is obviously very well known as a uh, enterprise application software provider, um, but we have an incredible pedigree in financial services. We've been in the industry for over 30 years. Uh, we've been helping our clients leverage technology, transform their businesses and deliver real value to their customers um, across those 20 years, over those 30 plus years. Um, we've also, um, when I think about the financial services division that we have in the company, we have over 1400 customers in 160 countries who are delivering and using our software to support both retail and corporate banking operations. So an incredible pedigree and a, and a very big customer base in the industry, a lot of experience. Now you guys have been around for a while, but in recent years, needless to say, we've seen an astronomical rise in digitalization. Uh, where are your customers on their roadmap? So you've seen any symmetry between them? Yeah, so look, I mean, I think when, when we talk about the digital revolution, it is totally transforming the business and all industries, not just financial services. Um, I think initially uh, our customers struggled a little bit. They had some challenges with legacy tech debt that they had to overcome. They had areas that really held them back and focused on regulation, some cost constraints in a difficult macroeconomic environment for them. Um, but it totally changed with the pandemic, right? The pandemic accelerated the move to digital and the digitalization of financial services in a way that we couldn't have foreseen. So the number of digital customers exploded threefold, the number of digital transactions has grown six to tenfold. So we've seen this huge change. And when I think about the, the journey that our customers go on, they have generally tended to start with retail. That was where the, the digital revolution initially started, but now it's everywhere in the bank. So they're looking to digitize all aspects of their business, um, focusing really on customer centricity, on being agile, on being innovative and delivering world-class services to customers. Mm. Uh, beyond that sheer increase in, in volumes, banks are also facing a challenge to deploy uh, real-time clearing and settlement systems for payments. So how's that impacting the industry? So in the digital world, real-time is the new norm, right? right? There's absolutely no way around it. Um, I think it's been driven by market demand, by competition, and also by the regulator and standards. And the banks really have to react to that. I think there's um, probably three areas that they have to really think about when they think about real-time. One is their operations. So when you're in a real-time environment, your operations have to be incredibly efficient, incredibly robust to be able to manage that real-time. Any, any challenges you face are immediately apparent in the market, and you want to make sure that your operations are incredibly efficient. You need to have the technology and platforms to support it. So this is true 24 by 7, zero downtime, incredibly performant. So you're looking for hyper performance, hyper scalability in your technology and your platforms. And then finally, as, as banks move to real time, they need to help their customers in the business impact. So there's a lot of impact in areas like liquidity management that banks are looking to support their customers as they adopt real time and get used to a real time environment where payments are being processed in seconds as opposed to in days. Mm. So. Well, ISO 2022 seems to offer or promise a lot, shall we say, in terms of uh, smoother payments, in terms of richer data. Uh, but what business benefits can the banks and their clients expect from real time, do you think? So I think, you know, um, ISO is probably the biggest topic inside us to this year, maybe after generative AI. Um, I think the, um, the change that we've seen this year in, in Cybos is a move from talking about how do they adopt, so how do they migrate to the ISO standard, how are they going to adjust their systems, to how are they going to utilize it and deliver real business value through the benefits that should have been. So realizing the promise, I think, of ISO uh, 2022 has been the, the theme that's come through this year. Um, and we see lots of advantages, right? So if you think about um, that, that real time and ISO together, it kind of acts like a lightning rod for innovation. Payments are everywhere in financial services. They impact every part of the business. And we're seeing specific innovations in areas like their ability to do financial crime tracking, like their ability to deliver additional services to their customers 
if banks have more intelligence about their customers, they can offer a much broader set of services. So going beyond banking to offering um, advisory services to helping customers better manage their balance sheets. So moving from just transactional relationships to much more strategic uh, value add basis mm -hmm. makes them much more sticky and much more valuable to their customers. There's so much going on internationally, so much unrest, and so it, it would follow that banks are uh, more concerned than ever about being prepared uh, to fight against uh, uh, fraud and crime. Uh, just talk to me about what you're hearing from your clients on that topic. Yeah, you, you can't talk about payments and the international movement of money without talking about financial crime. I think um, for us, when we think about financial crime, it's not just the financial side of it. We have to take a step back and remember that there's also a terrible cost, right? There's a, some very real human suffering behind financial crime. And that really motivates us to invest incredibly heavily um, in financial crime. It's a continuous battle. So our customers are continuously fighting against ever more sophisticated bad actors in the system. Uh, and we're helping them by leveraging the latest in technology. So particularly things like AI, machine learning, um, gives them an ability to, if you think about historically, it was very rules-based, very just on specific yes, no kind of things. Now they're able to do complex networks, find hidden relationships, and, and see patterns in transactions and movements of money that they couldn't have seen before. Um, so that really helps. And we think it's across the whole spectrum. So from the monitoring of the transactions right through to identification of potential suspicious activity mm. to investigations uh, that we, we can support them. Um, and all of that remains really core to our customers, right? And making sure that they're doing everything they possibly can in the fight against financial crime. Well, you've just touched on uh, AI there as a huge buzzword in 2023, in particular generative uh, AI. Uh, how do you see this, these technologies in particular ha having an impact on like the payments and, and related services? You no, know, so look, I mean, I think about um, AI and it's, it's already, so machine learning and AI is already in, in the industry and it lends itself to industries that are quite complex and have a huge volume of data. So financial services and payments is an ideal industry for artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, and generative AI, when we think about it, is going to allow us to take AI to the next level. So um, in things like automation, so uh, machine learning could automate fairly simple tasks. We're seeing the potential in generative AI to automate much more complex tasks. Um, we've talked to customers about automatic generation of suspicious activity reports. We've talked to customers about how they might analyze new regulatory requirements that are coming out using generative AI, right? So um, we're seeing a lot of opportunity. It's still very early days, um, but I think the potential is, is enormous. Uh, we do think when we think about the whole AI space, we do like to take a step back and remember, we want to focus on responsible AI. We still want it to be um, understandable. We still want it to be unbiased. And we still feel that it probably needs to be checked. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even if you've got, in other industries, you may have someone automatically writing an article, you're going to have a journalist or someone checking it like that. So similar in banking. So a draft of an SAR might be checked by an actual bank staff. Kind of another great conversation to kick us off on day two and one of many going on here at Cybos Toronto 2022. Uh, Connor Kaliri, uh, Senior Vice President, Oracle Financial Services. Thank you so much for giving us some time on Cybos TV and I hope you have a fantastic remainder of the week. Thanks, guys.